Here's another example of an applied maximum minimum problem. And this problem, again, this is a typical problem that you find in a calculus book. A soup can in the shape of a right circular cylinder of radius r and height h is to have a prescribed volume. So, so a certain amount of soup is supposed to fit into it. The top of the, the the top and the bottom of the cans are cut from squares and the shaded corners are waste. Um, there, there is no waste in the um, in, there's no other waste or in finding the sides. Find the ratio r over h of the can um, with the, uh, requiring the least amount of material. So, so we want a can that will fit V ounces or whatever the, the measurement is of soup in it, um, but will be made of the least amount of from the least amount of material. And we will, you know, we'll have to basically cut the top and the bottom and they'll be in a square from a square. And these little corners that we have on the edge that that part is just thrown away, so it's not. It we have to con consider that as part of the of part of the material we use up, and um, then of course the side. So so let's take a look at at how this would 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 look. So so we could have a can that were kind of tall and and skinny. All right. Notice the 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 amount of surface area that we'd use here. The material that we'd use would would be given like that. Uh, otherwise, notice as we as we lower the the height, as the height becomes less and the radius then correspondingly becomes more, all right, we get to a place where there, we reach a minimum amount of volume. Okay, or, I'm, I'm sorry, the volume stays the same, minimum amount of surface area, minimum amount of material that's to be used up here. And we want to know, all right, what is the ratio of the of the radius to the height, right? When, at that point, when there's a minimum amount of volume, so let's let's take a look at this. So we we need to to think about what we're we're going to be using here. So so the material used the material used is going to be. Well, let's see, we have the top, and if we think about the top, all right, if you look at the top, the top, basically, one half of the side length of each rectangle is the, is the radius of the, of the circle, all right? So we go from the center out to the edge, okay. and that's the radius of the circle. So the top is going to be a square and each side of the square will be two radius long so the top the area of the top is going to be 2r will be that the length of each side and and it's a square so to find the area we'll have to square it the same thing with the bottom right if 2r squared it'll be the exact same same size square all right, now what about what about the sides? Okay, we'll have to look at how we calculate the the volume of a side. Now, now, now here's a shell that would be similar to the walls of the the can, the side walls of the can, and here's what I think about it. Remember, all right, if we look at the circumference, the circumference is is um, of of a of a of the circle is is two pi r, and then oops, I, and I don't know if I'll be able to to do this or not let's see I think all right if we look at this all right then we have the the, the height okay and now let's take and and if I would would take and cut the can along one side and then lay it out flat okay notice I'd have a rectangle I'd have a rectangle all right, this dimension of the rectangle would be the height, and this dimension of the rectangle would be the circumference. All right, and notice if we roll this back up again that that's what that would look like. All right, so here's the circumference, here's the height of the can. Let's get rid of this now. And so the sides of the can all right, are going to be the circumference, which is 2 pi 
r that's the length of this rectangle times the height which is the other the other area of part of that 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 um uh, the other dimension of that rectangle so so the total area the total amount of material and i'll just call this a is going to be um well when i square this i'll get four r squared for the top four r squared for the bottom and then two pi r h for the sides all right now remember one other thing and that is that the volume has to be v all right the volume has to be v v is just a number and so let's see what does that mean well the volume the volume of a of a cylinder is the area of the base which would be pi r squared times the height so this would give us the volume and that has to be v well if that's the case then the height of this thing the height is going to be it's going to be equal to v over pi r squared v over pi r squared so now i can make a replacement all right so the area all right the total area of the material i'm using can be expressed all in terms of r as well I'll put these together this will be 8 r squared times um let's see 2 pi r and then h is v over pi r squared and so let's see so some of this can cancel here i think that we can um cancel in back here a pi and then an r okay and we'll be left with this this equation a of r will be 8 r squared right at times or excuse me plus 2 v over r 8 r squared plus 2 v over r and remember we want to minimize this okay and i guess one more thing that we should say is that r can go well it's got to be positive but it could go um to infinity as we made it you know bigger and bigger all right we could make the can smaller and smaller and still keep the same amount of volume so we want to we want to minimize this over the interval from zero to positive infinity okay and remember now if we can find that uh, we have a a continuous function it's only discontinuities at zero but that's not part of our interval if we have a continuous function on a on an interval if there's one relative extrema if that is a relative max then it's a maximum if it's a relative min which we hope will happen because we want to minimize this that it'll be an absolute minimum so so let's start out by looking at the critical values we'll, uh, all right and critical values are recall where the first derivative is zero or undefined so taking a derivative i get 16 r and this is r to the negative one r in the denominator so i would get minus 2 v over r squared negative 2 v r to the negative second and then let's simplify this i'm going to multiply by an r squared over r squared to get a common denominator and this would be 16 r cubed minus 2 v all over r squared and so this will be there'll be critical values at, well at zero but zero is not a part of the domain so that won't really be a critical value but that will be where it's undefined or where the numerator is zero that would be 16 r cubed minus 2 v is equal to zero if setting this equal to zero maybe i should write this all out setting the derivative to zero and then multiplying both sides by r squared i would get 16 r cubed minus 2 v 
is equal to zero and then um, and from there I would get r to the third is equal to 2v divided by 16 and when we divide that out that leaves an 8 in the denominator so r is going to be the cube root of v divided by the cube root of 8 the cube root of 8 is 2 so it would be the cube root of v over the cube root of v over um, over 2. Now again, let's see, I don't know that I want to take a deri another derivative of this thing because I'll, it'll involve the, the, um, uh, the, you know, the, the um, quotient rule and such. Oh, maybe if I look at it like this, if I look at it in its original form, it might not be too bad. The original form was 16r minus 2v over r squared. I, I guess it's not too bad to take a derivative in that form. All right, and then, so let's take that derivative. So the second derivative of um, a with respect to r is going to be, let me turn down the size just a little bit, All right, so I can see everything, is going to be 16 and then let's see this is like r to the negative second so this would be plus 4 v r to the negative third so that would be simply a 16 plus plus um uh, 4 v over r to the third if i replace the r if i evaluate this derivative at the cube root of v over 2, I would have 16 plus 4 v over the cube root of v divided by um, 2, and that would be cubed. This would turn out to be 16 plus um, 4 v divided by 1. When I cube this, cubing the cube root, I get v over 8, and, <clears throat> excuse me, that'll be 16 plus 4v times the reciprocal of this, 8 over v, and the v's cancel. I'm left with 16 plus 32, 48, and notice that is greater than zero so we have a place where the derivative is zero and the second derivative is positive so we have a a, 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 a minimum all right so uh, there's a has a minimum at r is equal to the cube root of v over 8 over i'm sorry over 2. okay all right but now we're asked to find the ratio at this point of r over h so we need to go back and remind ourselves all right remind ourselves what um was the relationship between between um, H and and R, and remember where did we put that here? The, that that um, that pi R squared H was V. Pi R squared H was V. Let me just make a a copy of that. So that H was was v over pi r squared. So then r, I'm going to need another page. All right, so that in this case, so we have r is equal to the cube root of v over 2 and
and h is going to be is going to be a v over pi r squared which will be which will be v over uh, pi let's see r is v to the one third over two okay. and that's go and we have that squared so this is going to be excuse me v divided by pi v to the two-thirds when I square it v to the one-third times v to one-third v to the two-thirds over four and now I can invert and multiply so that this h will simplify to v times four over pi times v to the two-thirds and this is of course v is v to the three-thirds in the first and so we when we cancel these we'll get a v to the one-third all right um times four the numerator all over pi and now if we look at if we look at r divided by h that's going to be the cube root of v which I'll call v to the one-third divided by 2 all over 4 v to the one-third divided by pi and this will be inverting and multiplying this expression bottom v to the one-third over 2 times pi over 4 v to the one-third or to the two-thirds okay oh no i'm sorry to the one-third the v to the one-thirds cancel and i'm left with pi on the top and two times four eight on the bottom so that is that that ratio okay now this is again a, a, an example of a, a function that where we're not on a closed and bounded interval uh, so we have to actually, when, when you're in that situation, you have to determine that a, um, a critical point gives you a relative minimum or a relative maximum, in this case a relative minimum, um, before you can uh, assume that we had a, a, a minimum value. Okay.